Are you ready? Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 17. Let's read together in concert. One, two, three, read. Though the fig tree may not blossom, nor fruit beyond the vines, though the labor of the olive may fare, and the fields yield no food, though the flock may be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stores. 18. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord, I will joy in the God of my salvation. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Matthew chapter 1, starting from Matthew chapter 4, starting from verse 1. Matthew chapter 4, starting from verse 1. The Bible reads, Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterwards he was hungry. Now, when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command these stones become bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him up into the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, if you are the son of God, do what? Throw yourself down, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge over you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. And Jesus said to him, it is written again, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Again, the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, away with you, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only you shall serve. Next verse. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. This morning, for a few minutes, I'd like to share using as a title, I will. Amen. Please help me tell your neighbor, I will. Please help me tell the other neighbor, I will. Now, the neighbor behind you, tell them one more time, I will. You may be seated in God's sanctuary. Amen. Hallelujah. God is indeed good and God is doing great things for you and through you. Amen. I will. I will. I will. I will. Amen. Uh, Matthew chapter 4 verse 1 says, Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit of God into the wilderness. To be what? There are, I believe, some... De- some versions that say he was actually driven into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Language being used almost as if it was not necessarily Jesus' preference, but that the Spirit of God drove him into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Amen. Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Amen. In this life, beloved, you have to watch what it is that is driving you more than what it is that you are driving. You have to watch what it is that is motivating you, pushing you, pulling you to act in a particular way versus what it is that people see you do. Because it is easy for you and I to perform without people decoding or understanding what is driving that performance. Amen. And so the question is not what it is that we are doing. The question is what is making us do what it is that we are doing. Amen. And here the Bible tells us that the reason Jesus is heading into the wilderness is not because Jesus is trying to make a name for himself. That the reason Jesus is going into the wilderness is not because Jesus wants to prove that he's more powerful or more superior 
and that he can do this and do that. The Bible tells us that clearly it is because the spirit of God is driving him in that direction. I don't know about you and I, beloved, because many times we do many things and, and the question is what it is that is driving you to do what it is that you are doing. You will be amazed how many people are doing what they are doing if you discovered their real motivation for what it is that they are doing. Help me ask your neighbor, why are you doing what you're doing? Please help me ask the other neighbor, why are you doing what you're doing? So that the problem is not what you are doing. The problem is why. Amen. So many people can do the same thing. Literally. Copy. Similar. That when you look at them, it looks the same. And it would be easy that because you've seen probably two groups of people do the same thing, it will be easy for you to think that they are motivated by the same thing. But chances are that just because they are doing the same thing, they are not necessarily motivated by the same thing. There are people who will come to church and they'll dive deep into worship, lift up their hands. And some people do it because God has been good to them. God has done great things for them. And when they think of all that God has brought them through, they worship him like that. But there are some people that do it because someone in the audience needs to see them. <laughs> Bad idea. Now, being humans, we are not privileged to see what it is that is driving them. And we can mistake their actions. We can mistake their theatrics to mean it is a level of spirituality. Let me ask your neighbor one more time. What's driving you? Bible tells us that Jesus was led by the spirit into the wilderness. There are people who follow other people because by association they might be famous. There are people who come to church because there's potential for a hookup and business. There are people who come to church because They've seen that they are some single this and single that and maybe the motivation and, and dream to get married in 12 months looks more possible by coming to church. Please ask your neighbor one more time, what's driving you? Mm. Beloved, you and I must come to the place where our motivation is God. Our motivation is that God is the one driving us, moving us in the direction we are going. While I'm on this, please allow me to take a few minutes and say, you don't choose the church you go to. God chooses the church for you. You don't choose who your pastor is. God chooses your pastor for you. Even if you don't say amen, I need to tell you the truth. You see, the problem, the problem is that when you make certain choices based on your preference, the day you are offended, you will leave. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. The day you feel like he's not meeting the way you leave. But when it is God that makes the decision for you to go into the wilderness, when it is painful, you stay. Because that's the place that God has said to you, you must stay. Are you here? When you follow certain men, you follow them not because, you know, they are trending on social media. You follow them because God has said so. So that no matter what happens in that season of following, of learning, of being mentored, should something happen, you know you're still going to follow because it is not for popularity that you've gone or for fame. You've gone there because God gave you direction. And in the place where you hear God tell you to go, you stay no matter what happens. Whether things look like they're going your way, you stay. Whether things look like they're not going your way, you stay. You stay because you know who it is that drove you, that led you, that positioned you to go in that direction. Please help me ask your neighbor one more time. Why are you doing what you are doing? and you will be disappointed and it is at that place where we will have to know why are you doing what you are doing if you are doing this so that you can also become popular may the Lord help you 
If you're joining groups, participating, so that someone can see you on social media, it is amazing how our exes will motivate. <laughs> I shouldn't be going there. I should just preach. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, uh, forgive me. It's been 15 years. Shalalabaya. But just because you know that they'll be on social media somewhere, somehow, you are motivated to do all kinds of crazy things. May God deliver you. May God deliver us. It is time for you to live the life God has called you, not the life that you want to impress your ex. Amen. Amen. What is it that is driving you? The Bible says Jesus was led by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted. It is interesting, beloved, that was going, number one, into the wilderness. Number two, to be tempted. This is not a direction anyone wants to go. But if God wants you to go there, you'll go. Amen. The Bible says that when he went into the wilderness, the devil came to him. Next verse, please. The tempter came to him. And he said to him, if you are the son of God, command. <laughs> you people, do you know Nakonde rise? Because while you are at the gate, <laughs> and all this time, they were busy. Then the day you say you are fasting, someone comes up with Nakonde rice. If it's not Nakonde rice, I don't know about you, it's fritters. <laughs> the Lord bless you people, beloved. The Bible tells us of the three temptations of Jesus, and the first one being the temptation of turning stones to bread. Life happened to Jesus in such a way that he was tempted to do something that would satisfy his flesh. After all, he was hungry. Notice with me, beloved, that in this temptation, it was appealing to his flesh, to what he desired. After all, he needs to satisfy himself. In this life, there will be times and places where your flesh will be tested. The question is, what is driving you? What is motivating you? What is moving you? And it is the test of finding out why you do what you do. Amen. And the Bible says, Jesus answered and said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that does what? Proceeds from the mouth of God. In other words, God did not expect you to live just by the food you eat. God expects you to live by the word that he's speaking. Say that one more time. God is not expecting you to live just by meat and shimmer. God is expecting you to live not by what he said, but by what he is saying. The Bible says you will live by every word that proceeds continuous, present. Meaning every time God is speaking. That's why it is foolishness to debunk church. Because church is the place that God has instituted for the preceding word of God. That no matter what situation you are in, when you come into a place like this, whether you're joining online or even present, that you come into the place where you hear a thus says the Lord. The Bible says, let him who has an ear hear what the Spirit is saying. Not what he said, not what he's going to say, but what he is saying. You have to come to the place of understanding that no matter where you are in life, there is a word that God is speaking to you presently. And it is your job to position yourself in the place where you hear what God is saying to you now. Yes, you made a loss last week. What is God saying to you now? Yes, he's acting funny like, you know, things are happening. What is God saying to you now? Because if you act based on your circumstances, you will miss the direction of God because there is a word that God is saying to you in your now. And if you act based on your stimulus, if you act based on what it is that is happening in your environment, you will react and not respond. You might miss destiny because you will make decisions to impress the crowd and not to impress, to impress the king. And so you have to be at the place where you hear what God is saying concerning you. Help me ask your neighbor, what is God saying concerning you? 
For man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So before you quit, what is God saying about you? Before you close shop, what is God saying? Before you turn around, what is God saying? Before you give up, what is God saying? You need to come to the place where you understand what God is saying in your moment. Other than that, you will make a decision that will close the chapters of destiny over your life. And you will find that you've made the biggest mistake just because you acted out of emotion and not out of revelation. May God speak to you a word of now in Jesus' name. You have to plug yourself in places where you know you will hear, and thus says the Lord. Because life is made up of so many things, and it is easy to act out of emotion. It is easy to act out of fame, trying to be famous. It is easy to act out of expectation. After all, they expect you to behave in this manner. But those that will go, those that will endure, those that will win, are those that act according to the word of God. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And that's why you must pray as you come to church. That's why you must be part of intercession. Because the prayer is simply this. Lord, whatever is going to happen today, may I hear a word from you for my life. I don't know what my neighbor is going through. That is there. But me, may you speak to me based on where I am. Should I relocate? Should I stay? Should I transfer my children from the school they are at into the next school? Lord, speak a word to me. Let me hear my own word. And so that in the volume of everything that is said, in the volume of everything that happens on the altar, that you will not live without hearing a word that is proceeding from the mouth of God. Amen. The second temptation, the Bible tells us that the devil took Jesus to the temple. The devil took Jesus to church. <laughs> Tell somebody took him to church. The devil took him up into the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple. The devil took Jesus to church. Allow me to break this down for you. The first temptation is the temptation of the flesh. Because it is a temptation of if you are hungry, yes, you are hungry, turn these stones into bread and eat. What would that satisfy? It will satisfy your flesh. Are you all right? The second temptation, and I know that Luke changes them and I understand why he does that. But the truth is, this for me is the right order and I'll explain. The second temptation is a temptation of spirituality. The first one was of the flesh. Eat and you'll satisfy the flesh. This one is of spirituality. Please notice, the Bible says not only did he take him to the temple, he asks him a spiritual question. <laughs> Next verse. And the devil said to him, if you are the son of God, do what? Throw yourself down, for it is written, you, he shall give angels, his angels charge over you, and in his hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. This is a temptation that has to do, if you like, or questions the spiritual depth of Jesus. If you think you're that spiritual, angels must come and rescue you. This is a temptation that has to do with his spiritual life, with his faith and belief in the invisible, because angels are unseen beings. And so the devil says, do you think that you are that spiritual? Now, those of you that may, God help us, survive the physical, the, the, the fleshly temptation. You might think that's all there is to survive from the desires of the flesh. But there is a place where <laughs> you must also come into alignment with regards to your spirituality. Because the devil can use your spirituality against you. It's in your Bible. Amen. It says, if you're the son of God, throw yourself down. Angels will sort this problem out. You know, this is a sin that people sin with the answer in the spirit. God will forgive me. <laughs> Elebo Amen. It is a spiritual temptation. It is a temptation that has to do with whether you see yourself as someone who's strong spiritually or not. He says, if you do this, Angels will come to your rescue. Amen. And it's a temptation that happens, according to the Bible, 
in church because the devil took Jesus to the temple and brought out spiritual and even quoted scriptures. Amen. And Jesus answered, look at the next line. It is written, you shall what? Not tempt the Lord your God. The final temptation, you've caught it. Because we've dealt with the flesh. We've dealt with the spirit. Now the final temptation is the temptation of the soul. And the devil took him up on an exceedingly what? High mountain. Now, if the Bible had said the devil took him on a mountain, my imagination would have already gone there. But the Bible says, number one, it was exceedingly high. So it was not just a high mountain. It was exceedingly high mountain. I've been to that mountain, and trust me, it is high. Amen. It is a very high mountain. I've been physically to the Mount of Temptation in Israel. It is, yeah. I mean, people go on top using cargo jumping, and it takes you because climbing is, is, is high. Are you all right? The Bible says the devil took him to an exceedingly high mountain and showed him what? All the what? All the kingdoms of the world and, and their glory. I already preached on this before, so you know now. When the Bible says the devil showed him the kingdoms and their glory, it's not speaking the kingdom of King Nebuchadnezzar. It's talking about the kingdoms, the ones that, if you like, are shaping and determining the direction of life and society. And so the kingdoms here for you would mean media. Here they would mean, you know, entertainment. The entertainment kingdom. Here it will mean the political kingdom and showed him all the kingdoms and their glory, the things that influence life and society and shapes the minds of people in terms of the direction in which we go. And he showed him that and he said, I will give you the power to be on the pinnacle, to be the captain, to be the top dog, the alpha of all these kingdoms if you'll only, no, not just worship, but fall down and worship me. Are you with me? And the Bible declares, Jesus answered, away with you, Satan. For it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God. And him only you shall serve. This is a temptation of the soul. You know this, I don't need to spend too much time. A human being is made up of three parts. Yes? Uh huh. You are a spirit that, who lives in a body. And you have a, so a man is made up of three parts, spirit, soul, and body. Are you all right? And in this temptation, you see the different aspects of the parts of man literally facing, if you like, warfare or temptation as to what it is that you would do. Are you all right? Now. I believe while it is that Luke lists them differently because, of course, he tries to show that the spirit is superior, which I agree. But I believe that Matthew listed the spirit as second and the soul as last because the battle between the body and the spirit takes place in the soul. Amen. When you feel hungry, it is the soul that makes the decision. Now. The soul of the man is made up of three things again. So first man is spirit, soul, and body. But the soul is made up of three things. The intellect, the will, and the emotions. All right. So that when you feel a certain way, you think about it intellect and then say, I will. The reason why, Malali Adura, Zelege Jaya. The reason why the devil was able to rebel against God is because, as you know, Lucifer was in charge of worship. Now, worship is meaningless if it is robotic. Let me say it in this way. God did not create you as a robot because to create you as a robot is that you would do the things that you desire to do. Are you all right? No. If he made you as a robot, then you would do the things that he desires for you to do. Are you all right? And so there were three, or at least there are three known angels, categories of angels. There's Michael, who is warfare. Uh-huh. 
Gabriel who delivers the word is a messenger and there was Lucifer who was the one who was delivering worship. Are you all right? It is okay for the other two angels if you like to be robotic because their jobs involve obeying orders from God. But you cannot offer worship that is pure if you are robotic because that worship is meaningless. Let me make it this way. If you were to create a robot you design a robot and you wake up every morning and the robot says, I love you, I love you, I love you. Every morning for 365 days, it tells you I love you. You might even say, I love you too, back to the robot. It is meaningless because it was programmed to do that. But if you create a robot and give the robot free will, either to love you or even to hate you. And then out of the passage of time, the robot turns around and says, you know what? I love you. That I love you is meaningful, is valuable because there was a choice not to love. But now has chosen to love. And therefore, man has the choice whether to worship or not to worship. Therefore, because there is a choice to or not to, when you say I worship, there is value because you can choose not to. And so God had to make Satan, if you like, with free will. So that when he says, I worship, it has value. And that's why he was able to say, I will exalt myself and be like God. Because it is the same free will that he exercised to be Satan. That's why when God made you and I, again, blessed and packaged with free will. That you can choose whether to or not. So that if you choose to, there is a value to it. There is a meaning to it because if you decided, you can say, I will not worship God. You can say, I will rebel against God. You can say, I will walk away from God. So that when you turn around and say, you know what, I will worship you. Your worship has got value because you have choice. Let me say it in this other way. Please pray for me because some people may be offended for the next example. If, Heleboshaya, you were the only one. And this man chooses you to marry you. <laughs> Am I helping some people quickly? When he says all the prophecies and the nice things he says, you may believe it. But you begin to wonder, is it that he married you? He had nobody else? But when there are ten people, and out of the ten, he chooses you. And marries you. There is value because he had choice. He could have gone somewhere else, but he came to you. And so because he came to you, there is a price tag. There is a value. There is a, there is a way you move. There is a way you think. There is a way you appreciate the choice because you know he could have gone anywhere else, but he came to you. And so your response is different from everybody else. Because you understand that for him to choose you and say, I do to you, he had choice. We could use this even the other way. So I'm not saying just this to women. Even the man, you must understand, she had choice. Amen. The fact that she chose you, there must be a value. Are you all right? And because there is value, you now understand that this is different. Are you okay? So, don't tell me you are holy when you've never had the choice to sin. It is the choice that then you choose holiness over sin that says you are holy. Don't tell me you are not a thief. You've never been given an opportunity to steal. It is the opportunity that says you are not a... Can I come into your inbox? Okay, let me stop. Let me stop because some people might leave church. And so we call people fornicator, adulterer, that one. You just never... Mm -hmm. No one's been knocking on your inbox giving you pressure. And so you appear like your sister holy. My, hey, may the Lord deliver you. If you've been at a place of pressure and chose to still live holy, you then... Uh... <laughs> Forgive me. Um, yeah, let, let's come back. Amen. And so the point is this, beloved. That it is choices that reveal motivation. Amen. That who you really are is revealed under pressure. 
so that sometimes it is those fires of life that not only reveal to others and to God, but also to us <laughs> what really is driving us. Are you praying and fasting? Because God is the motivation. Or because there's some people that you want to impress that you're a spiritual giant. And when we come to praise and worship, it is the ultimate test of will. Because of all the things that can receive your praise, God receives the praise. There are some people who are here because in their mentality, they arrived because they are, that, they are that good. They are the bomb. Amen. There are some people who are up in society, whatever you consider up, whether it is in your who they are because they are intelligent. Mm. There are some people who believe that they've got a good marriage because you know them, they are better than the rest. Yeah, that's why. Those ones, they are, yeah, they can't have. Because, you know, based on whatever it is that is motivating us or driving us, and we value, assess, examine ourselves based on whatever it is that is speaking to us, it's only when life happens that the real revelation, that the truth comes out as to where and how you are where you are. That you're probably not where you are because you were good in school. <laughs> that you probably don't have the job that you have because you're more intelligent or more qualified. That you begin to realize that truthfully, like Paul, I am that I am, but by the grace of God. Amen. And beloved, when you come to the place where you realize you're where you are, but by the grace of God, you begin to realize why even more you should worship him. Because when you realize that you are where you are by the grace of God, you know that you will get to where you are going also. Because <laughs> if you arrived where you are because of your intelligence, it means that you will still be looking to the source of that motivation to get to the next level. But if you know that the reason I am here is not because I'm better than my neighbor, but because God worked it out in such a way, you will begin to appreciate and worship and trust that wherever it is that I need to go, I will still get there by the... Amen. Now, for some people, you are here by the grace of God. For some people, you are even nowhere You can't even point and think or examine and say, what is it that is working in my life? It seems like my food turned stone into bread. is not even happening. It seems like my spirituality is not even happening. Other people are scaling mountains of kingdoms. They're getting promoted. For me, it's not even happening. Is at that place where we question, what is it that you will do? Allow me to invite a prophet to the witness stand by the name of Habakkuk. Habakkuk chapter 3, <laughs> verse 17 declares, Though the fig tree may not bless on, nor the fruit be on the vines, though I'm working hard, and I labor for the olive, but the olive is not producing any oil. I plant in the fields, and yet the fields is not producing any flock. Though the flock is producing no food, though the flock may be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the store, yet I will. I said I will. I choose. I can be rebellious. I can throw a tantrum. I can be upset. I can begin to blame God. I can begin to say this thing does not work. Yet, I will. When things look like they are not working, I still choose to say, I will rejoice in the Lord. I see people getting married when I know I deserve to get married before I, they should get married. And it seemingly is not happening. Yet, I will. 
There are people being elevated in places where I dreamt I would be elevated. And it's not happening for me yet. I will. Though the fig tree <laughs> shall abide. May not blossom. No, the fruit be on the vines. Though the labor of the olive may fail and the fields have no food. Though the flock may be cut off. Yet, I will. That means that there's nothing that is going to stand in the way of my worship. Whether good things happen or they don't happen, nothing will stand in the way of my praise and worship. I will rejoice in the Lord. I have already made up in my mind. The decision is made. The circumstance does not my decision to worship God. My decision to worship God has already been made. Circumstances may aid it, but I will worship him. I will rejoice in him. I will bless the name of the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continuously be in my mouth. I don't praise God based on circumstances. I don't bless God based on good things happening in my life. Whether they happen or they don't happen, I will rejoice in the Lord. I made up in my mind. I made up in my spirit. I made up in my soul. I have decided and it is determined. I don't know about you, but I will rejoice in the Lord and in the power of his might. I will salvation. Help me tell your neighbor, I will. Help me tell the other neighbor, I will. There are some people who are waiting for something good to happen before they can rejoice. There are some people who are waiting for a blessing to happen before they can glory in God. There are some people that are waiting for a breakthrough before they can worship the God that we serve. But I came on this Sunday morning that whether the door opens or does not open, whether there's a breakthrough or there's no breakthrough, I will, I said I will, I will, I will, I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. I choose to rejoice whether things look like they're going my way or going against my way. I will rejoice. I said I will rejoice. I will. It is an act of my will. It is something I've determined. It is me who's deciding whether to worship or not to worship. I am not letting circumstances drive me or motivate me to do what it is that I'm doing. I am already determined and driven. I will worship the Lord. Lord, my God, whether things are perfect or seem imperfect, I will rejoice in the Lord, my God. I really wish I had some few people that are in the place where they say, I have determined to worship this God with or without evidence. I will rejoice in the Lord, my God. Psalm 34, the psalmist tells us, I will bless. Oh, come on somebody. Come on, Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord in good times, in bad times, in favorable times, in not so favorable times. I will, I will, I will, I will. I don't know about you. Maybe you're waiting for something to happen, but I will bless the Lord. Oh, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall not sometimes, not some seasons, not some good times. His praises shall continuously be in my mouth. Let the humble see and hear and magnify the Lord. Verse 2, verse 2, verse 2. Let's not rush. Verse 2. My soul shall make its boast. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Verse 3. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exhort Tell your neighbor, I will. I will. Tell the other neighbor, I will. I will. When things look like they're going my way, I will. When the guy I'm dating is tripping, I will. When the girl that I'm dating seems like she's not interested anymore, I will. I don't know who I'm talking to. When my boss is nice to me, I will. But when my supervisor becomes a principality and a demon, I still... I still will. I still will. When my business is doing well, I will. When my business does not look like it's doing well, it's hit some bumpy roads. I want you to know that I will. I will bless the Lord at all. And his praise shall continuously be in my mouth. Now, Reverend, are you saying that every time you will feel like giving God the glory? Are you saying that every time you will feel like worshiping God? Are you saying that you will always be in a good mood, a mood of wanting to praise and worship God? That's not what I said. And I want to bring to the, to, to, to the stand Psalm 103 to help you and I give the position. 
Psalm 103 verse 1 says, Bless the Lord all and all that is within me, bless. It means there were times, there will be times I'll have to command my soul what to do. Feel like it, but bless the Lord, oh my soul. You don't feel like shouting, but my soul, listen to me. You better shout and give God some glory. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. I don't feel like it, but so listen to me. This is not about feelings. Whether you feel like it or not, bless the Lord, all oh my soul, and all that is within me. And if you need some motivation, if you need some encouragement, if you need something that will help you feel good, verse 2 will help you. Bless the Lord, verse 2. Oh, bless the Lord, all oh my soul, and do what? Tell somebody, don't forget his benefits. Wrong neighbor, try the other one. Tell them, don't forget his benefits. Verse 3 says, he forgives all. He's the one who heals all my... Paraphrase, listen to me. He's the same God that brought you out of that mess. You better not forget it. He's the same God that delivered you. You better not forget it. He's the same God that fixed you up when you were messed up. You better not forget it. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name and forget not his benefits. Benefit number one, he forgives all of my sins. Every place you are have messed up every place i have messed up he was still willing to forgive me he is the god that heals me from all of my diseases or diseases spiritual ones if including the emotional ones he is the god that heals me from every disease and how can i not bless him how can i not lift him let's finish this thing he says he redeems your life from destruction and crowns you with and tender mercies. Verse 5. Who satisfies with good things so that your youth is renewed. Like, tell somebody, that's my God. <laughs> tell the other person, that's my God. And that's why I bless him the way I bless him. That's why I worship him the way I worship him. I may look mad when I worship him because it's not about you. It is about my God. Somebody shout, yeah. Next verse for me, please. Is that the last? The Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. Last verse, I believe. Take us there. It says, He made known to His ways to Moses, His acts. Come on, next verse. The Lord is merciful, aha, uh -huh. slow, and abounding in love. Come on now. <laughs> He will not always strive with us, nor will he keep his anger forever. That's my God. He has not dealt with me according to my sins, nor punished me according to my iniquities. Come on, somebody. For as the so great are his mercies towards me who fears him is there anybody here that knows that this god deserves your praise is there anybody here that knows that this god deserves your worship so why are you pretending come and give, give him the praise give him the glory i will bless the lord at all times in the face of whatever the enemy is doing against you. On this Sunday morning, we bless the Lord. In spite of everything that you are in, we bless the Lord. In spite of whatever is not happening, we bless the Lord. In spite of whatever is happening. If the enemy thought he would shut you up, stop your praise, mute your worship, come on, to the, on this Sunday morning, in spite of everything you ha have to deal with, you still choose to bless the Lord, to bless the Lord, to bless the Lord. Whether I have a job, I will. Whether I don't have a job, I will. Whatever the enemy throws at me does not change my will to worship him. I will. Let me tell your neighbor one more time. I will. Wrong neighbor. Try the other neighbor. Tell them I will. 
Now please say it this way. I don't know about you, but I will. I don't know about you, but I will bless the Lord. I don't know about you, but I will worship the Lord. I don't know about your family, but I, I said I will. I will. If nobody else is willing to give him the praise, I came to make an announcement. I will. If nobody else is coming to the worship party, I am coming to the worship party. I will. I will. I will. I choose by my will, whether motivated or not motivated, I choose. I say, I will. In the midst of this hostile situation, I will. In the midst of the fight for my life, I will. In the midst of writing exams that seemingly are not going my way, I will. I will. I will. I will. I will. I'm going to ask you to stand on your feet and make a deliberate decision. Though the fig tree 